What's up, y'all? This is Chitty Bang, and I'm on the Renegade Millionaire Show, the podcast that profiles entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs. Join us as we go one-on-one inside the hearts and minds of some of our generation's best and brightest. And now, introducing your host, my friend, Sun Group Wealth Partners Managing Director, CNBC and Forbes.com contributor, Winnie Sun. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much again for tuning in. This is Winnie Sun, your host from the Renegade Millionaire Show here in beautiful Venice Beach at TuneIn Studios. Once again, I'm your managing director, financial advisor at Sun Group Wealth Partners, and you can follow me and you probably see me on CNBC, Forbes, and a couple other fun things. But please go ahead and bookmark this show so we can continue to stay connected. And with that, my producer just shared with me that did you know the Hallmark Channel is doing so well that really they should be getting a congratulations card for their namesake because the, the networks are on fire. And in fact, the stock is up and has almost doubled in the last 18 months. And I'm thinking that has a little to do with our guest today. So I'm really excited because I'm a huge fan of Mark. I've been watching him uh, recently on uh, quite a few shows for the, through the years. And he's been known to be one of the most attractive and nicest fathers ever. Mark Steinis, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Those are kind words, Winnie. I appreciate it. Oh, it's so true. I've heard, I've read so much about you. Well, I don't know if you want to believe everything you read, since I put a lot of that propaganda out there myself. I think <laughs> it's, um, no, it's, um, you know, and I, I hang my hat on stuff like that. I appreciate it when, when people... You know, it's a tough town to stay sort of on the on the right path in because there's so many challenges and you know there's a, it's a creative business so there's a lot of passion behind it and um, you know I've, I've managed to navigate that and still walk away with a good reputation and level headedness and that all plays into being a good dad as well and all that so yeah thank you though. no problem I, I'm sure the being the dad is probably your your biggest um, pride and joy. Yeah, it is. It's the greatest challenge I've ever had because I've had to um, balance things, you know, um, with career and all of it. But um, uh, I think having, you know, two boys that are, you know, good, you know, from the core out, they're just, they want to please, you know, so much. And it's just really, it's nice to have that good foundation. And then from there, it's just the day-to-day challenges that you face in raising kids and staying on top of their technology and staying on top of what's happening in, um, you know, the school and, you know, they're both, one's 11 and one's 13, so they're real close in age and it's nice and they're going to the same school. So there's no chance of... um, You forgetting to pick one up? You know, like I had one, I had one small occurrence where there was some bullying involved uh, and it's remarkable how your parenting instincts kick in, (laughs) but I uh, was able to sort of address it more with my son and how to handle stuff like that Uh rather than going to the the core because, you know, we talked about how bullies are usually bullied themselves Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's good. It's good. You know, you just have to be prepared. And a lot of that stuff, by the way, comes from the show that I host, you know, we talk about this sort of stuff. So it's really a think tank. Mm-hmm. every day for me to come to my job. Yeah, can you talk about your show? I mean, I know we watched you for years on Entertainment Tonight, but let's talk about what you're doing now. Well, the show that I host, uh, I was with E.T. for 17 years, mm-hmm. and the travel, the show changed so much during that time period when I first came on. Uh, it kind of got away from me as far as what were my real interests, and and it was time to make a change, time to stay home a little bit more. I traveled a lot, and when I came over to Hallmark, I found this unbelievably um, attractive show that was coming back. It was a show that was first put up in the 90s called Home and Family, and it mm-hmm. was resurrected again at this time mm-hmm. with a slightly different feel to it, but it is still the same spirit. And and the show, is, it's hard to sort of put a, you know, uh, a bracket around it because we do so much, but we're really a, we're a, we're a show a two hour live show every day that's jam packed full of whether it's cooking segments or DIY segments where we play games. Um, there's good information in it. We're doing, you know, the difference between Advil and Tylenol today from our, you know, sort of dealing with we have a family member who's a, a doctor and also a stand up comedian. So it's fun to have these members of um Vivian Metnopolis is on our show as well. My co host Christina Ferrari is amazing in the kitchen. 
but we really do. We teach people how to live the life that they have better, more efficiently, how to make their house more of a home, how to deal with crisis when it comes to raising kids or relationships. Mm-hmm. It's just a really solid show that we feel we take a, a, a lot of pride in putting a show together every single day that is meaningful but yet entertaining. That's incredible. Is this a show that you are able to watch with your children? Oh, yeah. This is completely family-friendly stuff. Hallmark sees to it. And, right. And, um, you know, it, my kids have been on the show several times. In fact, um, with the show that we're shooting today, Christina's daughter Ariana is here doing something on Father about Father's Day. That's great. We incorporate our families as much as we can in the show. And um, um, my kids have come on and helped build things or we've used stuff and done things behind the scenes at home. So it's a, it is definitely Friendly. Yeah, it's a very different from where we known you as the sexiest man alive. I like, you know, in People Magazine called you that in <laughs> Entertainment Tonight, and now you're doing a family show, which is really just the the next transition to your life. Right now, you're a single you're a single dad taking care of two boys. Yeah, you know, I think having that that moniker of you know when People Magazine had selected me for that, and that's wonderful and all. It's kind of hard to <laughs> uphold that for all these years, but. I try to take care of myself. I I work out regularly. I do all my stuff at home, and I do that for a reason so my kids can see, you know, that I that I that you have to take care of your health. You know, mm-hmm. I cook for them. Um, you cook too, you know, nightly, and okay, I try your, to give them. What's your dish? Educate. You know, it's, it's hard to teach a ch- kid to read, a, you know, the, the uh, labels on all the foods, but I try to keep them balanced. And we're this summer just starting to incorporate cooking lessons into their routine because, you know, it's almost like we can't plant a garden because we don't have a space here. But I grew up with a garden back in Iowa, and I remember going back and working that and having fresh vegetables and and whatnot that we'd have every night. And now I I love, you know, vegetables. I didn't at the time, but now I appreciate it. So I'm trying to do that with my boys. And when you start looking at Sit, you know, cooking with them, or I may have, um, you know, I know so many chefs from the show, mm-hmm. and they're all like, sure, I'll come over. And you, they begin to read labels. They begin to go to the grocery store and plan and know where in the grocery store to, the store to shop and where's the good stuff on the, you know, the outside and the perimeter, stay in the, in the produce area and what's good, what's not, what's organic mean, what's natural mean, and the difference between the two of those. And, you know, even those little stickers on the apples. Yeah, um, the numbers the mean something. On this show. It's like, what's that little sticker for? You know, what do uh-huh. the numbers mean? Yeah. So we find, you know, we find all reasons to learn and grow and do math when we have to pay the bill. Like, um, what's our budget? So everything becomes sort okay, of you're, um, not, you're talking my language a teachable now. moment. You know. Yeah. No. No. This this is all great stuff. And in fact, um, I, I talk about this with people all the time: the importance of teaching your children about budget and money. And but like even to a point, like I have three kids, I have three boys too, and we take them exactly what you're talking about: going to the farmers market and and experiencing loving vegetables. So let's talk about this. If I were to ask your sons what your best dish is, what would they say? Oh, first of all, they would say it's my ribs. Um, oh, well, that's I not a vegetable. Do, yeah, I, well, that's a ve- the best dish. My best vegetable is Brussels sprouts. Oh. And um, that's, that's, not that's easy what they to cook. enjoy the most. Um, I grew up on corn because I grew up in Iowa. So uh-huh. that to me is is just a very, very basic vegetable. I don't get too fancy with them. I, I like stuff roasted and um, or grilled. My, my youngest loves asparagus. Oh. And... Um, um, you know, Kai, my older one, will pretty much eat any vegetable. He's mostly really, anything green is good, is what I tell him. I'm like, if it's green, it's good. So they're oh, not big wow. on peas and green beans, but they like, you know, uh, broccoli and um, love. We have salad night once a week. So we'll we'll get the doctor up our salads and put all the accoutrement in with it. But, um, wow. but yeah, but my favorite dish that they love is, is my barbecued ribs, slow cooked ribs. Oh, wow. Impressive. Yeah. Well, we yeah. Have, yeah, wow, that's incredible. Okay, so now all the fathers listening are just thinking they're really inadequate. Here you are on TV, you have a show, you have, you've had multiple shows, you have Emmys, you have a golden mic, and you have time to cook with your kids. That's setting the bar pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm single, so I don't have that. I'm still working on that. But I have to, uh, you know, it's a culmination of things. It's not like it all hit at once, but... Uh, 
the success comes, you know, as far as the Emmy stuff comes with working with good people. You know, you surround yourself. Nobody, you know, um, gets to claim when you have that sort of success what, you know, it was all me, me, me. I've had wonderful editors and producers that I've worked with along the way mm-hmm. that have, you know, um, and and really raising my boys. I, I've had, I, I keep coming back to this, but this show has taught me so much about family and about raising them and eating healthy and how to talk to your kids and um, and use in a way where everything is a teachable moment for them. So what so, did you... You know, I try not to beat them over the head with it, but I'm like, hey, look at this. Can you pronounce the word on the back of this label? You know, they're like, no. And I go, we can't really say it. Should we be eating it? You know? No, that's not good. So, well, I guess, I guess doing this show, I mean, can you talk about your, maybe in your mind, one guest that you had that you were just like, wow, I was like blown away. Thank goodness I had them on my show because they taught me so much on my own show. Oh, gosh. I think that happens. It's hard to pick one guest because one day it may be somebody who comes in and cooks something. Um, there is, wow, that's a really good question because it happens so much to me. Um, we'll have relationship experts. Some of my favorite segments are when we have somebody come in and talk about relationships, because I think that takes up a huge portion of our lives. And it's one of the things that we don't really pay attention to until it's in crisis mode. Mm -hmm. And, uh, learning to take care of and manage something like that before it gets into crisis mode where you mm-hmm. have to now go into repair and um, it's the management of it. Um, mm-hmm. um, but, the, um, you know, we've had we've had motivational people on like Tony Robbins or Deepak Chopra mm-hmm. who come in and really discuss the things. I mean, but they're so widely popular. There's others that have come on yeah. who... Um, who've shared some good insights, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm motivated every day by just some of the people that I work with, whether it's Tim Douglas, who's also on Ellen's show and a contributor, um, Matt Rogers, who is, uh, one of our family members here on the show is on American Idol, but he's just a, a father of three kids that I look up to. He's just such a great man, you know, mm-hmm. um, with a good mm-hmm. spiritual foundation. And, and, you know, I just, I, I, I think I'm inspired every day by the people that I work with and our guests. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can tell. I mean, I can't wait to start to watch this show because what you're talking about is building a foundation that the entire family can can live and, and understand and learn from. And you're bringing all the mm-hmm. best minds into one two-hour live segment. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're over 600 shows in, um, and we're we were picked up for season four. And people keep coming up to us and saying, you know, wow, I, I, I just found your show. And that's really part of, you know, the, the thing that I'm proud of is that we have um, this really good um, um, program that people are still discovering. And, and you know, it's we exciting, keep going to Hallmark right? going, gosh, could we get a little bit more PR? It would be helpful. But <laughs> it's just the way they're, they're working and rolling the show out. As long as I have a job every day and they're happy with what they see, then that's great. But <laughs> I think we media. still have much more to cut. Yeah. yeah. You know, we put stuff out on social media and, and uh, we've got a big wedding special coming up um, on um, on Monday. And it's um, Paige Hemis, who was on, and she's one of our family members as well. We call them family members or contributors to the show, but they're, they're really our family. Mm-hmm. Her and her fiance Jason um, are getting married on the show, so we have a special, and it's just it's going to be a prime time special on Hallmark. Um, but um, yeah, it is it is um, a, a, a great show that just keeps growing and growing. I just heard again the numbers are uh, really climbing. Yeah, that's incredible. Let's talk about what I'm really interested. In. I read that you have a. I know you you not only are a great chef to your sons, but you also do a lot of tinkering around the garage. So you actually <laughs> build things with your, your boys? Kai, right? Because he really likes yeah. to tinker. I, well, you know, I, I got that that skill set or interest from my dad, who was... My dad worked at John Deere. Both my parents were raised on farms. And, <laughs> you know, my mom cleaned houses for a living. And my dad, you know, went and worked at the foundry and... and but he also loved to fix things up and, you know, whether he, I think it was part of the base of it was that he was a little frugal, but, you know, he worked hard for what he had. So they just learned to fix things and make it work. Mm-hmm. So right. when I got a little bit more into my own life and could afford some of the right tools to, you know, the good table saws and stuff like that, I began to understand, 
you know, a lot of this stuff is, you know, if you have the right tool, you can make the job happen. And mm-hmm. I worked construction over the summers when I was in college and I got to work with some good carpenters and um, I know some good finished carpenters who've taught me a few things. So I end up playing with my kids a lot and we, they know how to use all the power tools. They know the safety, you know, stuff that goes along, you know, where the hazards are wearing the goggles and, and we use routers and table saws and all of that to, you know, build and work on projects. And it's great because, you know, we actually did a segment on this about how DIYs and that process of with your child, Mm -hmm. I see this when I work with them. I I tell them, I go first, everything starts in your your imagination, your mind's eye, which is what is it you want to create? Mm -hmm. And then from there, the imagination gets put onto a piece of paper Mm -hmm. and we start asking ourselves questions. Well, just how long is this going to be? And if I make it like this, and my son wanted to make this gun from a video game, like a big blowtorch thing, you know, it was obviously a toy, but, but it was from a video game and he wanted to make it and use it for Halloween, but he had it so big, we had to start talking about the materials and how heavy it would be. And so you begin to do some math and you begin to talk about how you do this. And then you go out and you buy the material, which, you know, we use PVC for and, and some wood. And we began to shape and mold and put this together and, fasteners with glue and nails and whatnot. And he made this amazing um, prop, if you will, for his Halloween costume. And he felt so good about it. Oh, and I know. That to me is that that whole arc of taking something that you start with that you see in your mind's eye and mm-hmm. you create it out of nothing. And I think the coolest and, um, lesson that's to the that. the joys that we find, you know, about yeah. our time in the tool shed. Right. And, and I think the coolest part of that is that you teach a child not to be scared and that anything you just have to try and you you can dream mm-hmm. it and you can do it right that's what I, I loved yeah. about your background too I mean at such a young age it's not like you just grew up and decided to be on tv you built it from like such a young age even through college you were working and you had direction and you did a lot of hard work to get to where you are today so you have a lot to be proud of yeah. yeah, you do. I mean, there's a there is a persistence factor that's there when you, you know, I, along the way, I, I teach my kids this, and I share my personal journey with them when when the time is right. But I like you know, there's a part where a window opens, a door uh, cracks open, opportunities there, and you step through it. But then the rest is preparation. It's like how do you handle that moment, that exposure? Um, how do you grow from it? Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, I struggle. It's hard to get a start in this business. And then once you do, it's maintaining that success. That's very difficult because it's very competitive mm-hmm. and television is changing. You know, we were, I was having this conversation the other day and, and it kind of came on. I had a uh, moment with Lisa Gibbons and we were chatting when she was on the show, who's an unremarkable human being. Um, but Lisa talked about, you know, this sort of time of innocence uh, in the entertainment business. And for example, when I started, the internet wasn't what it is today. I mean, to exactly. stream videos and do all of that. And in fact, there's a there's a clip online um, that's going to date me, but it's it's just if you YouTube, you know, me and Carmen Electra together, you know, uh, a thing will come up where it's a story about me introducing this World Wide Web. It's Carmen and explaining to her how Entertainment Tonight's new website, which is launching, well. What really happened is when Twitter and social media came about, mm-hmm. celebrities didn't need shows like Entertainment Tonight or Access or Extra mm-hmm. and all the other ones. They need to get their news out and spin the story the way they wanted to. Mm-hmm. So they they could go to social media and post stuff on their Twitter account. Now, they became the master of their domain, if you will. So mm-hmm. the show's upper crust, the ability to, to be the first to reveal a trailer... Mm-hmm wasn't there anymore because people wanted to see it on their devices. It was on Apple TV or whatever. It was on iTunes. All these other places were getting, getting this stuff first. Right. And it left shows like entertainment tonight and the others to kind of go, well, what's the next tier? Well, we're going to start doing stuff on the Kardashians and all the tabloid stuff that's out there. And that's when things started to turn for me personally. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is not what I signed up for. I don't want to be doing this sort of, yeah, television. TMZ on TV. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's and it you know and so there's good and there's bad from from the internet from that point. I mean, right. I think a lot of people who are in pursuit of entertainment news, you know that that younger set. It's on Twitter. We'll get it off the internet. You know, yeah. they'll 
that's what they'll they'll do, and they can pick up what they want. Right. And there's still a place for ET. I mean, I still think the show's fantastic, and and the people who work there and what they do. I just think things times are you know changing. Yeah, people are and, changing. Um, you know, that's what I love about the show. It's that we're very stripped down, very reality. Yeah. Um, very refreshing, though. Um, you know, and it's 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 interesting because it's it's. It's not traditional, but in in this day and age, it almost seems traditional, you know. But it's it's refreshing traditional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's oh, you know, Debbie Metnopoulos, who um, you know was on the View when she was very young, and was worked mm-hmm. with the likes of Barbara Walters, and then she was on the Insider as well. We were um, um, connected through you know our other journeys in life, and now we're here working together. Um, you know, we were talking about how unique this show is, mm-hmm. and that it's the greatest from a, from a TV host, you know, air quotes around that um, mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. It is the prize job. It is the mother load. <laughs> it, is, it is constant ad lib. There's some structure around it, but you bring your personality, you bring your humor, you bring your, <laughs> um, your brains to it. And I'm just watching rehearsal now as Kim Douglas is going through her segment and she doesn't like us to sit in on her rehearsals because she likes the spontaneity of it. She mm-hmm. likes, and we like that. We don't mm-hmm. want to rehearse something until it's, you know, dead. Right. So we know just enough. And then the rest is this creation that happens right in front of the camera. And we invite our audience to come along with us. I know. I love it. So it's much more organic and it's authentic. And, and people can see that when they watch you on yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah. We don't reshoot anything. Yeah. There, we don't stop down. If there is something that goes on, we leave it in the show. I mean, it's it's there. It's hard, you so, know. Um, it's hard work. I just got, nice. yeah. You know, I've been. Um, I was just approached recently to do this, this uh, financial planning education. You know, to reach young people and teach them about finances. And I mean, it's hard work what you do. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. It's fun though. But I mean, I love it. But it, it's yeah. you know, people don't realize just how difficult what you do on a day to day basis. Is. So I'm I'm so glad. I'm I'm so just. I just love your story, and I so appreciate what you showed us today. So, and I know that we're wrapping up today, um, but I would love to at some point get together with you and talk more because I feel like, and I'm sure people when they watch you feel this way. I just feel like I made a new friend. Oh, thank you. Well, I think that's part of what we do. It's like you know, I'm I, I've never felt more um, in my wheelhouse and more connected to my career and and myself than I have doing this show. A lot of the Entertainment Tonight stuff, when, when you're asked to do that and put on the suit and go do it, you're really sort of representing what they want you to be. And here, I really am who I am. I mean, yeah. that's, and, and being that authentic mm-hmm. and then being accepted by a, a viewing audience, mm-hmm. you know, you just feel good about yourself at the end of the day. Aww. You know, you're not being rejected. If you play a character and people, you know, how many times have you interviewed a celebrity and they go, they play some gnarly character and people are afraid <laughs> to even approach them or right. feel like they're really that person and they're not. Right. right. You know, I get to play me and people, you know, I, I'm blessed, you know, enjoy my work or enjoy me. And that's just amazing validation to have. I know. Doesn't it feel fulfilling? You go home thinking, oh, wow, I just, I'm happy. And you're the, and this yeah. makes you a better parent because you come home happy. Yeah, it's yeah. true. And, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm glad I got this job. I'm going to squat on it for a while. <laughs> and sure. You know, it's, it is. It's like I, I got the winning lottery ticket. Aww. <laughs> oh, how Mark should yeah. be so happy to hear you say that. <laughs> Mark Stein just feels like he won the lotto working with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it is a, a blessed life. Definitely a blessed life. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Well, I'm going to have to come and meet you one of these days, but huge thank you to you, Mark. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, this this is amazing. Thank you for taking time. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. So um, how do we follow you on social? You can, I'm on all of them, um, uh, Facebook, uh, Insta, or Twitter. I'm usually very active on Instagram. Okay. Um, I'm a passionate photographer. I love the visuals, and I think Instagram suits my sort of social media mm-hmm. um but um but i'm all out there and it's just um you know i have mark steinus if it's a twitter but i love for people to join and follow and and get connected i try to keep in touch as much as i can being you know a single dad raising these boys i get a little bit tied down but <laughs> i really try to um i really try to you know stay connected because i think it's it's so important that 
people stay in touch. Yes, and see if like that that way people feel like they get to know you even more. That's awesome, and, yeah. and that's yeah. amazing. Thank you. Well, I'll definitely make sure to follow you on all those channels. Yeah. And those of you who want to stay in touch Thank with you. me, you can do the same thing. I'm actually really active on all those as well, but probably most active on Twitter. And, and so mine is at Sun Group. WP and Instagram is winnie.sungroupwp as well. And with that, thank you so much, Mark, for being on the show. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Until next time.